Welcome back to another episode of Mastering MetaHuman. Today we're going to be going into part two of the Mesh Morpher plugin. In this episode, we're going to be using the full version of the Mesh Morpher plugin instead of the light version, like in last episode. This is to ensure that we could bake the morph target to the skeletal mesh. That way we could use the additive morph targets that were already set up by MetaHuman on top of that custom mesh. Let's jump into it. All right, we're going to start back in the Unreal Editor. I'm going to start by right clicking, create a new folder, call it Mesh Morpher. With this open, we could right click, go to cinematics, level sequence. We can just call this ls underscore test. Go ahead and open that up. With that level sequence open, I want to check how our MetaHuman looks inside of the editor as is before we do any of the mesh morpher, any of that, just so you could see where it's coming from and where it's gonna be headed. So if we go up here, scroll in a little bit, click off of the mesh. You can see he's got some groom assets on him. If we click on any of these controls, you can see they work as intended. Now we can go ahead and we can leave him inside this level sequence and we could go ahead and click save. Then if we go to content browser, face, and go to the face asset that's associated with this metahuman, we could go click that and then click the open mesh morpher. Uh, if you don't have the Mesh Morpher, check the last episode, shows you how to set up the plugin and get this little button up here. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. If you have a full version, it's going to ask you for the license. You should be able to find your license, whether it's a trial or the full version, in your licenses page on the Mesh Morpher website. Now that we have our character here, what we're going to want to do is click on this poser. Right now we're only focusing on the face. You can do this for the body mesh as well. It's going to open up this default skeletal mesh. If you got the bones going everywhere like this, you can go ahead and click on the draw bones option in the left. Then we're going to go into the morph targets over on the right here, scroll all the way down to the morph target. Ours is called target base mesh. We're going to want to click on that morph target and click two bone snapshot. You can leave all of the settings at default here. Go ahead and hit OK. It's going to ask you for a location. We're going to put that here and we're going to call it bone snapshot underscore face test. Go ahead and save that out. I'll say the bone snapshot has been saved. Go ahead and hit OK. And what we could do now is go ahead and select that snapshot in the top left under the bone options. There you're going to see that the facial structure has changed a little bit. And what we could do is hit update from pose on the right hand side. And then if we go ahead and click on the target base mesh and set the weight to one. And with that set to one, we could go to the bottom and hit bake. One thing I recommend doing when baking down your skeletal mesh is checking this create skeletal mesh backup. This is especially helpful when you go back to rebind all of your grooms. We'll jump back into that a little bit later. Just go ahead and hit OK. I'll say we have to apply a level of detail changes before exiting the mesh editor. Go ahead and hit OK. And once that's all set up, you should see the target base mesh weight being set to zero again while still maintaining that sculpt. So now if we go ahead and minimize the poser in the mesh morpher windows, we go back into our scene, we should see that sculpt. You can see the ears are folded back like that. And if we go ahead and click on any of these little controls here. Hmm. Let's try to delete the asset here. Go back to content browser, metahumans, mesh morpher demo. Go ahead and click and drag it back into your level sequence. With everything being reset, you can see the controls are zeroed out again. Go ahead and click right here. And now we can see we're getting those proper deformations on the edited mesh. We even go into Content Browser, Face, open up the Skeletal Mesh asset here. And we could change some of the materials to maybe match the aesthetic of the new sculpt. When you change the materials, you're going to want to make sure that you change all four of these because there's going to be different LODs and things are going to change and act a little bit differently when you're working with the different controls. They might blend back to the original or change. So make sure that you're consistent with your materials and throughout the base colors as well. And we could also change the color of the grooms as well. Now you can see that there's some assets like the eyebrows and the beard here that don't exactly line up. And this is because of the binding asset here. So if we go ahead and double click that, we're gonna see this window and we can see the target asset as our skeletal mesh. But if we have our original pre-baked down skeletal mesh from before any of the sculpting, what we can do is go ahead and click this source skeletal mesh here. Scroll down to where that would be at. 
for me, it's going to be this mesh more for demo face mesh. If I click this, and there we go. We can see it kind of shows up over on the sides now, just that small little stubble. And what we could also do is go into the eyebrows, because if we click on the eyebrows, we can see they're a little bit up there. They're not quite lining up as well. So if I go down to the binding asset for these, again, scroll down to that original base mesh before the preschool, click here, see them pop in right there. Now we can open up our level sequence again. If things aren't loading in properly, you can go ahead and delete out the metahuman and go ahead and find the blueprint class right here and drag it right back into the level sequence. And we should be able to click on any of these controls in here. And now you could control it just like a regular metahuman. There's some assets in different areas where they might, as you can see here, the eyes start to climb out a little bit too much. These are different things that we could go back into the mesh morpher and customize each individual morph target to make sure that they have the proper deformations and everything looks okay. We could also see that the blinks here are looking pretty good. This is another area where you're normally going to want to check right away because this can be blown out and the deformations on the blend shape could be really all over the place. So let's go ahead and fix this little eye turn here where you can see the eye pops out a little bit on this side. If we blend it over to the other side, it kind of comes out, but not nearly as far as the other side. So let's open up the Mesh Morpher and fix it. All right, so once you have the Mesh Morpher open again, you can go down to the animation curves. For this one, we're trying to fix that one eye. If we go to the eye look left R, we go ahead and move that. You can see it's gonna be popping over on the left hand side here. So with that, if we go ahead and click on it, you're going to see the respective morph target show up in the top. If we right click and click open morph target. You're going to see on the left, it turns to select a tool. You can just go ahead and select move. And if your brush size is larger than this, you could hold B and right mouse drag and left mouse drag to change the size. And we're just going to go in here real quick. And if we click on the eye right shader, it's gonna glow yellow like this. So we could try to see a little bit better. Just click on here and drag in. And we can see that's looking a little bit better. So we could go ahead up to the top and hit save. It's gonna populate morph target with deltas. Give that a minute. We're gonna go ahead and save the skeletal mesh. And we can turn this back down to zero. Now, if we go minimize this, change the rotation of the face just to make sure we have a little bit more light while we're testing. And if we grab the little eye here, grab it to the left. You can see that that little deformation section there that we're having troubles with is now fixed. If you opened up the blink, right, and it wasn't looking exactly how you wanted it to, you could go back, you could find that morph target that corresponds with that animation curve open up the Mesh Morpher and edit it directly in Engine. There's no need for the other DCC packages. Again, if you really, really want to and there is need for you know some crazy morph targets that you want to implement, of course, you could open up the Mesh Morpher plugin. You can just search for your blink down here in the animation curves, find the blink that corresponds that you're trying to change in the morph target. Go ahead and make that blink happen, go up to Tools, and then you could export to OBJ. And then you could import that OBJ into your DCC package, model it however you want, and then import it back in. And that's it. You've got a working metahuman created with the morph target solution from the Mesh Morpher plugin. If you guys have any questions or you want me to dive deeper into any of the tools within Mesh Morpher or any of the other systems, please let me know. I'd be happy to do so. I want to give my final thoughts on the Mesh Morpher plugin. There are so many more things that I didn't go over in the video. I just went over the bare necessities needed for the MetaHuman pipeline. I definitely recommend checking out the light or even a trial version and see everything that it has to offer. But they do have different pricing models for indie, for companies, and for academic. In the academic section, it's more for educators and not for students. Uh, I do wish that they did have a student license. Uh, that way people can, you know, while they're in school, learn the software so when they join the industry, they could, you know, have it under their tool set. Now, I will say that maybe 90% of what is in the Mesh Morpher plugin can be accomplished in other places, maybe at a slower rate and across different DCC packages. I think the main appeal of Mesh Morpher is that everything happens within Unreal Engine, and it saves you so much time switching from, you know, Maya to Blender to ZBrush into Unreal Engine again. 
I've never been a big fan of the modeling toolkit inside of Unreal Engine to begin with, so inside of the Mesh Morpher, if I'm customizing my morph targets, I'd still prefer to export those out and do them within ZBrush. But after all, is it worth it? Now I put together a quick price example to see if it would be worth it, uh, depending on who you are and what you're doing, right? So let's say you are a freelance rigging artist creating metahuman rigs, and you're charging $500 per rig. This can be an idealistic situation for somebody who would be using the Mesh Morpher plugin. Let's say your normal workflow takes you 20 hours to create one of these rigs. Maybe the Mesh Morpher workflow narrows that down to 5 hours with a 4 times x efficiency increase. Now, maybe you're hitting two clients per, before per month and the Mesh Morpher workflow with that shorter time allows you to increase that up to eight clients. If you're making $1,000 a month, this could lead you all the way up to $4,000 a month. Again, I, I view this as the ideal client and situation for someone who would be using the Mesh Morpher plugin. Realistically, you know, we might not be having that four times efficiency. You might instead only save two hours. And let's say your bottleneck is the clients itself and not having a more efficient pipeline. Then this eight client efficiency upscale would still be two clients and that would make your $4,000 a month still $1,000 a month. But I mean, this could still be saving you four hours of time every single month. So if that four hours a month that you're saving is worth more to you than the monthly subscription, then it seems like a great deal to me. Thank you so much for watching. Next week, we're going to be going into Live Link and how we could use that with MetaHumans paired with Apple's ArcKit software to use motion capture data to drive our animations. And as always, keep learning, and I'll see you next time.